Hello, I'm Scott Stevens, Goldsboro City Manager, and time for our March update of activities or some of the highlights going on within the City of Goldsboro. Uh, I guess a recent area we spent or filled a lot of calls and emails is concerning feral cats uh, and in response to an article that was written in the paper that came out of our council retreat that we held in February um, and really trying to address a problem with stray dogs and cats within the community that are creating problems within certain neighborhoods. And for those neighbors in which these loose animals are reproducing and then rummaging around, it is an area of concern for residents and for the city. Um, we have a lot of people who are supportive of, of animals, feral or otherwise, uh, and are looking after some groups of those that have at least expressed concern. And our goal is to really manage and balance that and, and do what is best for the community. Changing our animal control ordinance, and that's where we would make this adjustment, uh, could potentially make it a fine if you're feeding uh, feral cats and dogs. Uh, but the intent of that is so that we are then able to trap them because we do have areas where people really aren't looking after these wild animals that are running around our community uh, and for some neighborhoods they become a very big uh, uh, detriment. Uh, they either harass them when they're walking their dogs or they just rummage or they're just concerned and once they start multiplying those those numbers can increase at least our experience has been pretty pretty significantly. Uh, our hope is or our intent is not to mistreat the animals but it is to be able to get them in a point where we can capture them and then carry them to the the SPCA so they can either find a home or at least uh, be treated in a more humane way. So more discussion on, on that issue to come in the coming months, um, probably March, April time frame in terms of an ordinance change with our council and I'm sure we'll have much more conversation with the public. But it's not that we don't care about dogs and cats that are running loose, it's trying to address those areas where there, there are problems for the neighborhoods and we do have several areas in which they are problematic for the community. I also want to mention our Goldsboro Partnership Against Crime. Um, again, our GPAC, we've talked about that a number of times ongoing. And in March, we really are bringing in our first call in uh, this month. Uh, we've got it scheduled for March 19th. We're pretty excited about uh, all the partners and the community involvement and the outside uh, resources that will um, come to Goldsboro that day to help deliver our message of make a better choice for your life, or if you don't, we're going to help you through the criminal justice system a lot quicker and that really is the message to those that have been violent offenders in our community in the past. As part of that we, we discussed with City Council uh, at their first meeting in March the idea of doing some advertising on uh, the gateway buses particularly those that run the larger buses that run only city routes and I think you'll see that message of uh, Violence won't be tolerated. Your consequences if you continue to have um, offenses, if you're a convicted felon, and what uh, your prison sentences could be. I think you'll see that more of that messaging coming in March, April time frame. And again, uh, we'll monitor to see if that's effective. But really trying to show that we are taking this seriously and we are doing something different than we have done in years past. Uh, in February, our council held a two-day retreat. Uh, we met at the Goldsboro Municipal Golf Course, so we got in a, you know, went to a different location but not out of town. And we kept the council engaged for a couple of days, one with some updates of information, uh, another part of a visioning exercise, uh, learning a little more about one another and why we think some of the ways we think. And then really asked the council to go through a process of helping us prioritize issues for them so that we as the staff and departments can work on addressing those priorities as we're going through our budgeting process for next year. Uh, the four priorities that came out, uh, pretty broad, but again, community appearance. Uh, that may be dilapidated homes, leaning sides, uh, trash in neighborhoods, graffiti, whatever you might envision that. But community appearance was important to the uh, mayor and council. Downtown development, and I think in particular private investment. So trying to do our part to encourage that private investment in downtown. Uh, parks and Recreation, I guess due to our master plan, had a lot of emphasis on needs, but improvements to our existing Parks and Recreation, our parks in general, and our facilities as well. And then the fourth priority was Greenway Development, and there's been a, quite a bit of activity and interest throughout the community in the development of Greenways for a variety of reasons. And for those that may not know, Greenways can be a pathway for walking and or riding, bicycles or other uh, equipment you might allow uh, and they generally are seen as areas that go through natural areas. They can, can go alongside of a roadway similar to our multi-youth path on uh, New Hope Road uh, but more often they travel uh, next to streams or natural areas um, and are an area that people can escape from maybe the day-to-day -day hustle some but also have some exercise uh, nearby to where they work or live um, and ultimately provide a connection point of how you might actually get to work or get to shopping um, depending on how the system is laid out. We do have two projects that uh, we're hopeful of that will come in the near future. 
Uh, and I'll share the first of those is a, a provided through some state grant funding that we've applied for. We should hear something in the uh, March-April time frame. So in the next month or so, we should hear if we have received the funding. But we have applied for up to $400,000 to extend some of our existing trail system and start trying to make some connections. Uh, the first uh, part of that $400,000, a $200,000 grant, would be used by the, the city in, uh, to extend and create the greenway from Royal Avenue here at the north side of this slide down along Stony Creek where the city owns property and coming down toward Ash Avenue um, behind Bicycle World crossing over into Stony Creek Park and then again continuing on through Stony Creek Park and having some crossing point over to Elm and then there are actually some greenway trails that extend on south of Elm. So we'll be trying to connect this north-south area for those that live in this area to provide a connection from Royal Avenue uh, down through Elm. And I think that would be a nice amenity for those that are there. People are already walking those trails in a lot of areas, uh, but the trails or the greenways would probably be a paved surface. That's our intent is to pave them with asphalt so they would be a better surface for walking, biking, or pushing a stroller along that. And again, we should hear about that in the March-April time frame. The next project is really one where we've partnered with the county commissioners here in Wayne County. They have applied on the city's, well, on their behalf, but for a project that the city would ultimately maintain um, for the community. And it would be an extension of the city's existing uh, multi-use trail along New Hope Road uh, here at the church. We would extend this trail along New Hope Road, cross uh, the, the creek, and then come down along an existing sewer line easement that runs behind Wayne Community College in this area. And again, very uh, nice area in terms of escaping, although you're still very close to civilization. It makes you feel like you're maybe not so close. Bring it in behind Wayne Memorial Hospital, and then we'd have a connection point back out to Wayne Memorial Drive at this time where the sidewalks currently exist along Wayne Memorial with our hope of extending the sidewalks up to New Hope Road so, or down New Hope Road to where this multi-use trail would connect, and you'd have a, a fairly nice large loop in this area. And again, this grant the county commissioners have applied for, they would administer the grant. We would actually uh, own and operate and maintain through an agreement the trails if we move forward. If we're successful in the funding and we move those projects forward. So again, you know, some of why do you want to do it, um, it's certainly a, uh, an amenity that many expect to have in a developing community. And we have a lot of people coming to Goldsboro and Wayne County who are used to these from other places they have lived. Um, and it helps to improve uh, one of our biggest things with keeping people healthy, getting them moving, getting them active, and improving the quality of life for those of us here as well as those that, that would be re relocating to the area. So I hope we'll have good announcements on those grant funds in the, in the coming months, and then you ought to see construction on that very soon that after, thereafter if the grants are in fact approved for City of Goldsboro and the County of Wayne. We had a transportation summit held uh, last week of February and had some uh, good information shared that week. Uh, Secretary of Transportation, Secretary Tata, was here and, and talked a lot about his philosophy uh, within the Department of Transportation, his directors from the governor, and where he saw the Department of Transportation sort of going in a better customer sense of helping to generate jobs, be more customer focused uh, and more efficient. And so um, along with the Division Four engineer John Rouse talked a little more about the US 70 project and resurfacing on DOT streets. Uh, within Wayne County and what might occur in the next year. So again, a lot of good information shared there and you'll be able to watch that on Channel 10 or uh, on the city's website you can find the video feed of that at any time of day that you'd like to watch that through the month of March. I spoke briefly about some local projects and a couple I'd like to share with you are street resurfacing because that is one that we as uh, city staff and I know our mayor and council are asked oftentimes when are you going to resurface our streets or are you resurfacing streets or our streets are in bad shape so when are you going to address those and so first I'd like to just uh, take a minute and try to orient, with, orient you with this map and, and just get beyond a little bit of misunderstanding that people tend to have that if a street is in the city of Goldsboro it's a city street. Uh, that's true in a lot of cases but it's not every case and this map is trying to show with US 70 up here in green uh, Royal Avenue in green, Spence Avenue in green, Ash Avenue in green, those all being DOT or State Department of Transportation streets for maintenance purposes and, and typically your main streets throughout the community will be state maintained streets so whether it's pothole repair or street resurfacing our state DOT is allocating funds um, to maintain those streets and then the streets in red or the neighborhood streets is I guess or most of this map will be those that the city are responsible for the maintenance of. So again, not every street within the city limits is a city maintained streets. Your neighborhood streets are primarily city maintained. Most of your main thoroughfares, again your Way Memorial, Ash, William Street, Spence, Royal, those are going to be maintained by our State Department of Transportation. 
Um, this is a listing of our 2013 street resurfacing, just showing you on a map. I know you can't read the street names here, but we do have these projects currently out for bid. It's a little over $500,000 estimated work here to be done, and we do have funds budgeted this year, and our council, uh, once we have bids in place, will either award those bids or not, but I would expect we'll award those bids sometime in April, and so you'll see the work in the coming months. But from streets at Lock Haven Drive, off Way Memorial, uh, to Hillcrest, or a section of Hillcrest, to Claiborne, south of Ash, to Audubon, up near Royal, uh, to Mulberry, you can just see we are moving at least that $500,000 throughout the community, trying to address the worst sections of these streets that we've identified, yet maintain streets throughout the city. So it's not in one part of our community, it is spread throughout Goldsboro. And if you look at the history of where we've done resurfacing, you'll see that same trend, that we have made some improvements in resurfaced streets over the years. Not enough, but we are doing some maintenance to our streets and that's important for us to continue to do. Uh, another project that the State Department of Transportation is, is the primary sponsor of and, and the one responsible for the construction uh, will be the widening of Royal Avenue from Sunburst Drive here and Freeman Motor being in this part of the picture, Royal Avenue here and US 70 showing here, but from Sunburst putting in a center left turn lane all the way down to Berkeley Boulevard here at this, this far side of the slide. And widen the three lanes, you'll have that center left turn lane that will primarily help at North Park Drive and then when you're coming back up to the stoplight uh, between Freeman Motors and Target on Sunburst, you won't have to wait for somebody making a left turn because they'll have a dedicated lane to be able to move over and get out of the way. So through traffic can go and it should make the traffic flow along Royal Avenue a lot better. Uh, the water line work, the utility relocation work that the city is paying for is currently ongoing, so I've seen that work out there. So if you see an excavator or equipment working today or early part of March, uh, that's going to be the utility work going on. And then very soon thereafter, the State Department of Transportation will have their contractor or their crews in there making the actual road improvements. And it should be completed this summer, so you ought to see that work over the coming months and be able to ride on it uh, late summer, early fall. Another project which you probably haven't seen a lot of is we have hired a firm to come out and, and do flow studies within our sewer system. So we have what we call inflow and infiltration, which will be groundwater or rainwater that gets into our sanitary sewer collection system and creates uh, high flows into our wastewater treatment plant, more than we ought to have there from a volume standpoint. And a lot of that is attributable to leaks, old pipes with cracks. Uh, when the groundwater rises, allows groundwater to get in, or when you have rainfalls, uh, the rain is, gets into those pipes. And so we have a system of 40 plus sewer monitors out there that have been installed through the month of March that are monitoring the flow. And so you can see the response to rainfall and we will take that data uh, once we have it in a month and really focus on where to spend our sewer resources in terms of rehab and rehabilitation and that will direct the city's efforts to spend many millions in sewer rehab over the coming years for some of these pipes that have been in the ground for 50, 60, 70, 80 years and, and that are in need of repair and replacement. We, our goal is to make sure we're addressing the worst problems first in terms of leaks within our system uh, and hopefully that'll make it better in the treatment process for us as well. So again, that ought to be complete through the uh, month of March in terms of our flow monitoring. And I think at this point I will close and just remind you we're always here to answer your questions. If you have comments or ways we can improve the community, uh, we have a dedicated staff trying to make life here in Goldsboro better by pro providing the service uh, from their department's angle. But we all are here trying to serve the citizens of Goldsboro and make it the, a great community to be part of. So please don't hesitate to call us, whether it's by going to the website. There's a citizen request tab. You can send an email that way. The phone numbers are there. And of course, the manager's office, 580-4330. Uh, and we're happy to talk to you any time. So th again, thank you and please don't hesitate to contact us if we can be, be of service.